Hey crafters, I'm here to do the first drill with me for this sunset wine glass diamond painting. It is very pretty. Like I said, I got this as a free exchange from our community craft exchange. And with everything going on right now, the diamond painting of a wine glass quickly went from the back of my stash to the very next project I was going to do because it looks tranquil and just so peaceful and I'm excited for it. Today, and I guess moving forward, I'm going to begin just in this top corner. The reason why is because this is where a lot of those yellows are. The yellows are only one DMC off from each other, so I think it'll have a very nice fade. And I also like starting in corners. So I'm going to change my angle, zoom in a little bit. But one thing I want to point out before I start. In the last video, I showed you all the different drills, and I'm like, I'm going to kit this up. I did kit it up and became so angry. I am missing two packs of 738. So after everything's over and I think it's safe for people to go back to the post office and be out and about more, I'll probably go on Etsy and try and purchase some extra drills. But yeah, we don't have that one. Okay, so I move the cover, zoom in, and let's get started. So I'm ready to get started. I decided the first one I want to do is the N symbol, which is 743, my DMC. And it's a very beautiful, just happy, vibrant yellow. I'm looking forward to this. And like I mentioned, this is my first square ever. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I'm worried about plotting it correctly in the box and then popping drills. So I'm trying to, I want to make sure that, let me zoom on the camera a little bit as I shake it, and I'm so sorry. There we go. I want to make sure that I'm putting it in all these little squares correctly. I feel like I'm really going to have to hunch over a lot for this painting, and we're going to craft, we're going to do this together, guys. I'm nervous, but also for this video, there will be no virus talk not go in there a second drill with me will be all about that but right now let's just craft together forget all the stressors in our life and just be angry that i didn't get two bags of 738 anyways so wow okay first square i am so nervous and it's n so do i gotta plot it directly. Oh, well, it looks cute. But what happens if I don't What happens if I don't put that completely in a box? That's why I've always liked rounds. And it's crazy to say I prefer round over square when I've never done a square. But with round, I feel like you have a little bit more wiggle room, and I am definitely not an expert. So having that extra space for my drill I feel makes me a lot more confident but okay oh no oh no I feel like I've already put one drill half in the other one okay oh okay eh. Eh. looks pretty good it looks good right that's all that matters so I did the diamond painting sparklathon in January and those are always a lot of fun and I really enjoy it and that was probably the last time I've done a big update and I'm just gonna talk. I got probably gonna film for about 20 minutes because trust me, I would bore you so much if I just talked and talked and talked any longer than that. But the biggest thing, actually, no, not the biggest thing, the cutest thing. So in December, we started noting, noticing that the little baby boy's eye was kind of looking in towards his nose. It was wandering around a lot, and our daughter had the same thing called strabismus. We figured that is what he was going to have, and we took him to an eye doctor here in Germany. And now he has to wear an eye patch, just like his older sister did, and it's hereditary, so it kind of does, you know, makes 
sense that he would also be experiencing that when she, see, look, that square I just did. Oh, I am, oh, help me. Oh, maybe when I put, when I finally get that 738 drill for the three symbol, it'll balance out. So the baby now wears an eye patch and glasses, and he is such a cute little kid in glasses. We are telling, or we're saying because people brought it to our attention, he looks like the little boy in Jerry Maguire, and he just has these big glasses on his little face. It's so adorable, and he's got this super blonde hair. So we are, we've been doing that since the end of January, and then in February, oh no, oh help me, these squares, not lining up, there we go. In February, my mother-in-law came to visit. Oh, it was wonderful. It's so nice to have a visitor when you're overseas because even when you live in a large community like we do and there's thousands of Americans, it can be lonely and isolating and having family with you, it just makes everything feel like home. And I really like my mother-in-law. She's so sweet. So she came out to visit and it was incredibly helpful. I mean, the kids adore her. And I'm trying to think back. I think she she came to visit during um, during what we call ski break here. And if you have no idea what ski break is, that is exactly how I thought when I first got here. And I'm like, wait a minute, is it what it sounds like? And people in Germany are like, yes, it's the week where you go skiing. And I'm like, oh, I didn't realize that was a thing. <laughs> but it's a thing here. It's a week where schools are closed and people just go on vacation and they go skiing. I don't know how to ski and my job wasn't closed. So we stayed here. My mother-in-law came and visited, watched the kids while my husband and I worked. It was really great to have her here. Uh, when we have guests, it's also fun because it kind of pushes us to go out and explore and show off the country we're in. So we did a few trips. And the one that I liked the most, we went to Berg Elts. 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 It is, I think, the third most traveled to and photographed castle in Germany. It's gorgeous, and I'm gonna put a picture here so you can see it. It has the, it's built on the side of a hill. There's water around it. It has the traditional German half timber style. And there's two ways to get there. You do a parking lot, you park your car, and you can um, pay for a shuttle ticket and have the shuttle bus take you. Or you can do a 15 to 20 minute nature walk downhill to get there. So Berg Elts is absolutely gorgeous and it's only open in the spring, the summer, and the early fall. And I think it's like April to October, April to November. And it was February. So we just decided, let's just go. Let's just go there, check out the outside. I mean, really a chance to see something really beautiful. When we got there, the shuttle bus wasn't working, so we did the 15 to 20 minute nature walk, which is absolutely gorgeous. We had the baby in the stroller, and then we had the two toddlers who spend a lot of the walk going, hurry there yet, oh, I'm so tired, oh, I'm so tired. But we made the best of it. <laughs> they were actually really great on the way to the castle. They got a little tired on the walk back to the car, but this castle is so gorgeous. It's beautiful, and we had originally planned that we would go back in April. That is no longer happening. But we it, we just looked at the outside, took a lot of photos. And one thing, this castle is, I think what's most picturesque about it is it has this long walkway, long stone walkway leading up to the door of the castle and travel books and I don't know what you call them, people that go and travel to really beautiful places to show you all about it. Whenever they display or they're doing something talking about this castle, it's when it has 
this big bridge and nobody's on it. Oh, I gotta shake my drills. I don't have very many face up anymore. It's this big bridge and nobody's on it. And it's gorgeous. And then you actually see the real photo. Hold on, I gotta shake my drills. I'm doing a video. Oh, yeah, your diamond painting. Mm-hmm. Can I see? Yeah, it's a square. What do you think? Great. It's my first time doing a square. What square? The drills are square. Look at them. They're not circles. Okay. I don't see it. Well, here, take a look. And then go back and enjoy your nap time. Your nap time is mommy's quiet sanity time. <laughs> They're so sweet. One of them came into the room and put a box on her head and started talking to me. And the other one just came up like she's floating on a cloud. My little babies. Ugh, where was I? See, see, it may have been months, but I still am just as distracted as always. So the thing is, when they show the castle and there's nobody on the walkway, that's because they're there in December, January, February. When the place is not open, there's not many tourists, and you can get that gorgeous photo. And we got that gorgeous photo. But what we had to do was we showed up about, I mean, maybe 4 or 5 p.m., and by the time that we ended up walking back to the car, it really was um, getting dark. It was dusk kind of time. But when we got there, it was a very short wait. I think there were only two other, like one group and one couple that was there to wait and get their picture taken. But when you go during the summer or the spring, it's a long line, massive, massive, hundreds of people kind of deal waiting in line for this photo. And then you always have somebody in the background. But we were so lucky by going in the off season, we got to have this really special moment. And it was beautiful. I need to find a chance to get back there. But we took my mother-in-law there and that was a lot of fun. And we also went to Cologne, Germany. It was my first time going to Cologne. And they have a big, beautiful Gothic architecture cathedral with, I'm trying to think. They're, I read all the information about the style and the, and the design, and of course, I'm blanking right now. Put a picture in here. But you can see it's gorgeous, and we went on a beautiful weather day. The sky was clear, lots of sunshine. It was freezing cold, so you don't see that in the picture, how cold it actually was. But that was another fun adventure that we went to. We took the, my mother-in-law to, and that's actually not a far drive from us in Frankfurt. It's about two hours, so it's really manageable to do with all the kids in the car. You know, the older kids will have a tablet and they can watch some cartoons or play games. And actually the baby is still in that stage where he loves looking at trucks so much. I think I'm out of ends. Mm, let me switch over. He loves looking at trucks and construction vehicles that traveling with him is still exciting because he's just always yelling out the window, truck, truck, police car, ambulance. He, so it was really manageable. We went there, we had a nice day. And then um, my mother-in-law was here. She was here for about two weeks. And the way it worked out is the day before she left, my husband had to travel to Egypt. I'm gonna take a pause. Which one is B? Okay, B is DMC 726. Put it on the tray, shake it out so you can see this is a oh, brighter shade of yellow than the one that we just did. Almost like a translucent yellow. Almost. So he ends up, oh, here we go. Let me not start. Mm, that got a bad drill right there. Few. So there's that one with the ship, and then these two. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not focusing well, but these two. But the color looks really beautiful. What I see, you see. If not a slight bit darker on the phone, it looks really good. And this is gonna be B. So he ended up going to Egypt, and he had a two-week trip there. 
and then he left on a Saturday. My mother-in-law left on a Sunday, and this Sunday was fashion Sunday. I had heard about fashing. People had asked and talked so much about the parades and you dress kids up and it's a really great fun time and if we were gonna do anything. And I just didn't know if I wanted to take on that much, that large of an activity with three kids on my own. The day that grandma leaves when they're already, you know, not in the best mood because grandma's going home. And it was raining. It was raining in the morning. So do I really want to go to a parade in the rain? No. So grandma ended up leaving pretty early. I think it was like a 7 a.m. trip to the airport. We get back home and we're just sitting around the house and it stops raining. And it's a little cloudy, but it warms up. And it's like, well, you know what? The kids are so upset at this point, getting them out of the house could be a really good thing. Take their mind off everything. So let's just go. And I don't know that much about fashion. I knew it was Germany's Mardi Gras kind of party. And I knew that it was very kid oriented. So this is like the German Halloween when kids dress up in costume to get candy. But again, I didn't know the where to go, the best places. So I just took the U-Bahn to the exact downtown Zile downtown center and said look I am gonna roll the stroller and the kids out if I don't see any celebrations going on we can still get lunch or something and go back home but I went there and I come up from the U-Bahn and this is a massive U-Bahn station the one downtown there's like six entrances and exits pop up at the exit and there it is taped off the road for the parade and I'm like oh, okay we're gonna have a front row seat for this there's no backing out now the kids were really excited I ended up getting there like 40 minutes before the parade started because I have other friends who went to another town and they get there two hours in advance to get a good spot and I'm like I can't I can't entertain the baby for two hours in a stroller we'll just go a few minutes it worked out well. We were there 40 minutes ahead of time. As it got closer and closer and closer, it filled up. And the most awesome thing, I'm just standing there and my boss comes off the U-Bahn and I get to see and talk and hang out and chat with her, which was a lot of fun. And the parades get started and my gosh, Germans know how to let loose and party. <laughs> they have these, it started with bands and parades and music and even everybody in the parade is drinking and they're all throwing they're all throwing out candy to the kids and my kids are so excited because living overseas they've seen parades they've seen you know the Thanksgiving parade they've seen the Christmas parade they've never gone to a parade like this before so they're jumping up and down bouncing around, filling up their hands with candy. And then it's this moment when I realize I'm so happy I did this and I'm so glad we're here in Germany to enjoy this. And it was amazing. There's just kids everywhere. Adults are grabbing candy and pushing other people out of the way to get candy. And then there's other adults that are grabbing candy and giving it to the kids and I'm holding the baby and the girls are getting candy and they've made like little friends that they're talking to about candy and these floats are going by with massive bands and people playing drums and then there's a, a parade float that comes by with a cannon on it and they're shooting a cannon and then there's a parade float throwing out like birthday cards at you and then there's a parade float passing out beer or shots and then another parade float of like kid characters dressed up and it's like well there's spongebob going by it was really unusual and so entertaining and we stayed um we stayed a little over two hours it actually ended up happening where about an hour a little over an hour the girls were saying i'm really tired can we go home and it's like yes we kind of 
get up to the sidewalk and start to make our way to the U-Bahn, and then they see this area with only adults, and they're not really jumping around or getting the candy, they're just kind of having a nice time, they're kind of waiting for the beer floats, and they walk over on their way to the U-Bahn, they just kind of stop, and all the adults give the girls their candy, and they're like, they're smart girls, so they're like, oh, we're gonna stick around here. We stuck around there for another hour where they got double, triple candy. And it reached a point where they were like, I'm I'm ready to go. So we stayed until about float 140 something. And it ended up going, when I asked somebody, they said it usually goes to about 190. So we think it was, um possibly a little less or up to another hour. And when we were leaving, this dance music float comes by and everybody leaves the sidewalk and they go stand in the street and they're all dancing. They're blocking the floats, so the floats stop. They can't move anymore. But it seems like everyone's doing this because maybe that's a tradition when this float comes by. I wasn't sure, but it was such a happy moment or really fun, happy day and so glad I did it. So the fashion celebration in Germany. That's the kind of thing I might have to plan a vacation here around in the future because it was so fun. But we did that and the kids were adorable. Um, and that was the start of when my husband was gone for two weeks. And it worked really well. It was the first time that he'd been gone for that long of a period with um, not like coming back for a little bit and leaving again. And the girls were so great, but it broke my heart because the baby would just be like, where's dad, dad? Every morning he'd wake up, where's dad, dad? Where's dad, dad? And he'd be like, daddy's at work, daddy's at work. And he'd be like, daddy in Tunisia? And he'd be like, no, daddy in Egypt. And he was a handful. We're talking terrible twos, crying tantrum, fit, because he missed his daddy. And it was really sweet, but he made it for a difficult two weeks. And, you know, m most of that's on me because when I'm working and getting the kids out the door and doing all the meals and all that, I was so tired. But if I had just planned more activities, got them out outside more, and it was raining a lot still in February, then he wouldn't have been in such a bad mood. So I could have done better. But then when my husband came home, I got such a nice treat. Oh my gosh, such a nice treat. Uh, you, you ready for this? So when he came home, I booked myself in a hotel downtown for a night, and it was wonderful. I didn't have kids. I didn't have to make food for them. I just spent two weeks, like, really stressed out, and I got such a nice break. And, yeah, I, I knew I was going to be gone for the evening. I ended up packing, like, a shirt underwear, pants, toothbrush, and an entire bag of crafts. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not gonna need clothes or anything, but I am going to need, I brought two cross stitches because I didn't know which one I wanted to work on. I brought a diamond painting, I brought a paint by numbers, and I brought a, a knitting project. And I just spent the entire night like crafting. And then I slept in and I spent the entire morning crafting. And it was so nice. <sighs> And then by the time I came home, I felt fully recharged. But wow, it was a rough two weeks. The baby just didn't understand. He made it difficult on me. Here we go. So, I've already been jabbering for about 25-ish minutes. And this is my progress. Squares are interesting. It looks like corn to me. Does it look like corn to you? I mean, it's all different shades of yellow. I feel... Okay, so I don't... I don't hate it, but I feel like I can see all my imperfections a lot more with a square. And once I do more colors and it kind of all blends in, I bet it looks better. But that looks pretty good. Ah, what are you doing? Get back here. Okay. Oh. I'm gonna press those in. I did get a comment on one of my um, videos that it looked like I pressed my drills too hard. And that's probably why 
my wax was coming out so much and I'm like okay that makes sense so I want to try and push my drills uh, less hard and just use my finger to tap them in I don't use a roller I'm just gonna use my finger but that's pretty much what I've been up to until the beginning of March everything from March after is virus stuff and I said no virus stuff in this video the second drill with me that I do for this will have more talk about that. This was a good video to just not think about anything, let you know what I've been up to. And for the next video, I'll probably try and keep it the same, like 20, 25, 30 minutes. But this is what I got done. I hope you were able to craft and get some stuff done. Let me zoom out. Again, I'm gonna have to touch the camera. There we go. Yeah. Let me know what you worked on while I worked on this. And yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Bye crafters.